Hey yo, it's Troy, and I am back with yet another pen review. And you knew that I was going to, because if you saw my previous videos, you saw that I went to the DC Pen Show and I picked up several of them. So that gives me at least a couple more pens to talk about and share with you. Uh, and look, the reason I do this is not for my own glory. To be honest with you, it's it's not about me. Um, well, my goal is to help you that if you're a collector, if you're someone who is really enjoying pens, you want to know what maybe you could add to your collection or how to go about it. I'm just sharing from my own experiences, my, and I'm pretty open about my successes, my failures, uh, mistakes that I've made, and uh, things that I found to make your life easier. So uh, that's kind of why I'm here today, because I wanted to share a little bit about my recent experience at the, at the pen show and thereafter uh, with a pen that I'd been wanting. I literally keep a spreadsheet of all my pens and all my inks, and thanks to David at Figboot, who uh, is a wizard when it comes to such things, and he shares that with other people. Um, and I use that on a daily basis. Sometimes I open it up three, four, five times if I'm monkeying with pens all that day. Uh, and there's one tab on that spreadsheet, and I use spreadsheets at work all the time. I'm just not a wizard at them like David is. Uh, but there was a spreadsheet for a wish list. And on my wish list uh, were two pens that I picked up at the pen show. So got a chance to take those off my wish list. Um, one of which I've already reviewed, where I talked about uh, the giant sequoia from Monteverde and some of the challenges I had with it. Well, I had the same challenge with another pen that was on my wish list. This is a grail pen for a lot of people. And I, I, I won't say that I'm a bottom feeder, but I always look for a good bargain. Um, so, what I did was I went ahead and found a Montblanc Meisterstück 149. It's something I've been wanting for quite a while. I was actually not planning on walking away with a Montblanc 149 at all at the pen show. It just so happened that uh, I found a deal. I found a dealer that I liked. And at the pen show, I found uh, Mike Bloom, who had a booth there. And it wasn't necessarily Mike at the show that's impressed me so much as after the fact. Um, Mike was a stand-up guy when I told him about some of the issues, and I'm going to have to follow up with him here in just a little bit. And one of the things that Mike did for me is, just as customer service follow-up, uh, he dropped me an email. And in his email, he simply said that uh, you know he thanked me and hoped to see me again next year. And I emailed him back with a problem that I was having with a purchase uh, that I've already shared in a previous video. When I got this pen, brought it to the hotel room, inked it up. I wasn't all that impressed with it. Now, Mont Blanc in general, I'm impressed with because everyone that I've touched so far, I've I've liked, with with minor exception, um, because sometimes you get what you pay for, or if you're accustomed to a particular kind of nib and you got something that's a lot different, then you're not all that happy. So, anyway, um, what I had done was um, I had been shopping. Friends of mine have Mont Blanc 149s. I've been wanting one for decades, literally, uh, ever since I first saw people have Mont Blanc, and I first even realized that there was such a thing as a status pen. Uh, I didn't know really anything about pens, and they had uh, these people, um, the crowd I was hanging out with, were into Mont Blanc pens, usually ballpoints. Well, I was always into fountain pens from you know, 20 plus years ago. I only had really one that I worked with, but I knew that this is what I wanted. I wanted to have a good old fashioned fountain pen. Now, I'm looking here. I know what these are going for brand new. I'm looking at my computer because I just opened it up now. Brand new, this was quoted as $705. And I'm not going to mention the vendor who quoted me that price, uh, but I do have an email here in my inbox that I'm looking at right now. 705 brand new. So I know what other people have paid for them, what they go for. I've watched them on eBay, and I've lost a lot of auctions on eBay for these and Mont Blanc 146. Quite honestly, what I wanted at the show was I wanted a Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age. That, I figured, would be my next purchase. As I looked around the show, you go table to table and you see stuff that you like. I saw 146s 
we're going eh, around three hundred dollars. I saw one forty nines, five hundred bucks used, unknown condition, just used. Okay, so I kept looking around, and I stumbled across this uh, one table where there was somebody there trying to make a purchase of a Mont Blanc pen, and this guy took PayPal. Uh, he, the guy wanted to pay with a credit card. He said, "No, uh, here's my here's my business card. Send me a PayPal payment to that address. That makes my life easier. I mean, I had cash, <laughs> but I had cash for about half of this purchase left after having purchased other stuff. Uh, PayPal, okay, yeah, I I can manage that. So that intrigued me. I had that app on my phone. Happened to have that phone with me." I had two phones, one for work, one for personal. My personal phone had the PayPal app on it. All right, we'll see. So anyway, he when it, Mike got to me, he's showing me 146s because I figured eh, that's more within my price range. I could probably afford that, fork that out. So um, he also we looked at 149s, but he wanted me to see 146s first. Yeah, funny because he spilled ink all over his display case. <laughs> I didn't spill it. He did. But... Uh, so anyway, uh, we got to talking, and he offered me the price on, on a 149. And he said that all the 149s he sells were reconditioned at the factory, and he buys them in bulk. I wanted a medium nib, and so I went ahead, and we made a deal, and I took it back to my hotel. Well, my Monteverde Giant Sequoia wrote horribly, and I fixed that, and I included that in my last review. My Meisterstück 149. Beautiful pen. One of the things I like about them, they're classic, they're elegant, they're simplistic looking, but very elegant. They, they're dressy looking. For instance, this is my Mont Blanc 32 that I've had in my collection for a while. Yeah, it's got the, the little snow cap on both ends. And my old 32 now, Mont Blanc started using like the, the two-numbered system uh, in the 60s, so this is a their um, famous resin and with a uh, semi-hooded nib from the 60s, and for a little while that was my only Mont Blanc in my collection. And I had this in my target sites as well as a 146. So with the price difference between the 146 and the 149, I just decided I'll just go ahead and step it up and get the 149. So. I also had some Mont Blanc ink that I had bought in a sample, so I had Mont Blanc, um, oh, Mystery Black. At first, I tried using a Diamine Presidential Blue, and it wrote terribly. So I said, all right, let me give it another shot. Get rid of the ink, flush it out real well, try the Mont Blanc ink. <sighs> it still wrote horribly. Matter of fact, I've got right here a writing sample that I did two nights ago. Sunday night after I got home. This right up here. You may or may not be able to tell, but I can tell uh, when I look at it. You know, it had a lot of gray, and this is actually better paper. See, usually I'm writing on, you know, note paper like that because I work for a living, and I'm not going to supply high quality paper to take notes and, the, uh, and that kind of stuff and, and all that data that I need at work. So, you know, I, I write a normal everyday paper and it wrote terribly. This is a higher quality paper. It did a little better job on it, but still, it had a lot of gray. Font lines were a little too fine. I had to really press down in order to get good line variation or good flow and wasn't real fond of it. It was sold as a medium nib. It wrote more like a fine point. <sighs> wasn't, wasn't real thrilled. So, anyway. Mike had emailed me just to, to drop a thank you note since he had my email address since I used PayPal uh, to finish up the rest, the remainder of above the cash that was in my wallet at the time. So I emailed him back and I said, you know, hopefully I'll see you next year in, or the next show and maybe I'll pick up a 146 from you. But I got to be honest, the the pen needs some nib work, and uh, you know I, I explained what I just explained: grays instead of being a good rich black. I said, so that's kind of a problem. I'm, I'm probably going to have to get some nib work. He emailed me back and he said, well, if you get the nib work done, um, send me the bill. So he essentially offered to pay for any, uh, any tuning that was necessary, and I appreciated that. That was pretty stand-up of him to offer that. I'm normally the type on expensive stuff like that. 
not to push my skills. I am no expert. Just because I took a 90 minute plus seminar from Richard Bender on nib tuning or smoothing does not make me an expert. And I happen to have done that like Sunday morning. Well, one of the people who was teaching that class along with him was Linda, um, Linda Kennedy from Independence. And they're pretty much taking over a lot of Richard Bender's business. And he trained Linda and her husband, Mike. Um, so I've seen them at Penn shows in Raleigh and again uh, there in D.C. So I asked Linda before we went upstairs, I said, you're going to be at your table? She said, yeah, yeah, come on up. Um, I said, because I've got a 149 nib that needs some work. Don't know if I want to, you know, practice this on a 149. To do it on a $3 pen is one thing. To do it on a, uh, and I'll, I'll just be honest, I paid 400 for mine. Um because I figured for something reconditioned at the factory, I'll go ahead. Now I didn't get the fancy box, I didn't get, uh, you know, I didn't get the the ink that came with it, that kind of stuff. I got just the pen, and I was cool with that because I look at that at 705 for 305 bucks, I'll forego the box and the bottle of ink. Thank you very much. So um, I was like number seven on her list to get work done. And I was like, ah. And I had a time commitment, so I wasn't going to be able to stick around long enough. On top of that, I had a very sleepy, cranky eight-year-old that was in the lobby asleep in my wife's lap. And I said, you know, i got to hit the road. i got to go back to North Carolina. Um, plus, we were going to stop at Mount Vernon. I learned the hard way. Don't ever go to Mount Vernon on a weekend during the summer. You will not find places to park, and so you're not going to get into Mount Vernon. And you're finally going to go, ah, screw it, I'm out of here. <laughs> so we just went back to North Carolina. All right, so um, I debated about whether or not to do some work on this nib on my own. And I went ahead in, this morning, finally, and just did a really quick tweak. I mean, just a little. And then I wrote with it. It's like, oh, so much better. And uh, everybody in the house uh, that's written with it so far said the same thing. So my writing sample, much better. Wrote much better. The ink flows a whole lot better. It gives a full black dark line like I want it to. Like I think a medium nib from a $400 or $700 or $900 plus MSRP pen should write. So, yay. I celebrate little victories. Yay me. Um, so, anyway. Uh, that's the story behind my 149. Some of you may be bored and turn it off by now. I don't care, but that's my story. So now I've got two Montblancs in my collection, and I've got another one that I'm going to be scoping out here sometime soon. Matter of fact, just before, I mean, I'm talking the early, early wee hours of the morning before, when I went to go buy this, I'd lost an auction or was losing an auction on eBay for a 146. I was outbid, and I just said, ah, forget it. I'll just let it go. Uh, well, yeah, because uh, that was uh, wee hours of Saturday morning. I said, I got the pen show coming up. I'll just let that go. And I went ahead and, and got this on Saturday uh, later on. So, <sighs> what do I like about the pen? Well, like I said, they're simple looking. They're elegant. Now, Mont Blanc has, been, has made their marketing to be that they are a luxury pen, and that they are. Um, are they the end-all and be-all of pens? No. They are a high-quality pen, and they deserve their reputation when it comes to quality. I didn't think so when I brought this back, but I also knew it was probably just a small little nib adjustment, uh, some kind of tuning, and it would probably write like a dream, and now it does. So, with that being said, I'm happy now with my purchase as of today. Not so much when I first uh, brought it home. Now, um, black with gold trim, to me, is always, speaking of elegance and business, uh, professional. I like the fact that it is a piston filler and it has a pretty good ink capacity. You probably can't see it, but right in here there's a little ink window which is filled with black ink, so sorry, you're not going to be able to see it. Um, it's a decent sized pen. I like oversized pens. I like cigar shaped oversized pens in general. Uh, we're talking, you know, this thing is. Uh, all right, throw out some stats for you. Um, if it's comfortably in the hand, at 5.75 inches capped, uh, 6 and 5 eighths inches uh, when it's posted. In this particular pen, it is not too heavy to post. It's still fairly comfortable posting. I wrote some letters with it today, posted just like this in my hand. 
Um, and, you know, probably by the end of the letter, it would have felt more comfortable without it being posted. Uh, but, you know, if you're just doing everyday writing, jotting, note-taking, that kind of thing, and not using it on a constant basis, being posted is just fine. Um, and it's uh, only five and a quarter inches uh, that I measured when it's unposted. Now, as far as weight, because I use a uh, resin rather than a metal, it's 1.15 ounces or 33 grams. I've collected silver in the past so I know what one gram of silver feels like. This is exactly the same weight, I mean I'm talking to the gram when fully inked as the giant Sequoia Monteverde that I reviewed in my last video. So it's about the same length, I mean fairly close and it's about the same weight. Um, what else about it? I mean like I said elegant you know, the nib, they're always beautiful. It's got an 18 karat nib on it. Um, that's not a bad shot right there. Other than the problems I had to begin with, no complaints. If you like a good, elegant looking, high end luxury pen, and if you like larger pens like I do, then it's a great idea. The downside, and I'll throw in a tip here, and I shared this tip once before. Hey, see my chair's not squeaking now? Today I got a new chair, finally. After having a decade of an old, beat-up old chair, finally broke down and went ahead and bought a new chair. This is a cigar box. I showed you that tip before. Today I ran out. Um, don't smoke, don't want to, don't like being around it, but we have a huge tobacco outlet. I'm in North Carolina, I mean, come on. Um, and... Uh, they sell their old cigar boxes because they got this giant walk-in humidor people purchase. So um, I already had one that only held five. So now I've got um, yet another one and I've got two pens out of it right now including that one. So I went ahead and threw them in this uh, and I still got another box. 50 cents for a, card, a heavy duty cardboard box that once held cigars. I'm looking for a better system so if anybody has a nice good oversized pen storage system they, they want to share with me um, message me make a comment whatever I'd love to hear about it so how does it compare with other pens well <laughs> some people are gonna hate me for this all right other than the star on the top can you tell which ones which ones which probably look at it, the clip you can four dollars four hundred four dollars four hundred what is this it's a Jinhao 159 the Chinese knockoff of the Mont Blanc 149 gotta be honest this is probably the best pen that Jinhao makes in my opinion um, it's also the black elegant they make they make these in all kinds of different colors um, my mother-in-law has one my wife has one I've got one and they've got a red one, a blue one, and I've got the one in black. Uh, it actually writes fairly well. I can't, cannot, I cannot complain about a Jinhao 159 for four dollars delivered to my door from China that writes well. Now it's not a Mont Blanc. It's heavier, believe it or not, than a Mont Blanc. As a matter of fact, I just out of grain uh, for sheer grins, uh, 48 grams compared to 33 grams. So you know it's a lot more metal in this. So it's not the uh, luxury resin or whatever they call it at Mont Blanc, their, their resin. So, now that it writes much better, I'm much happier with it. Um, it's, a, it's a simple but elegant pen. Um, it is a status pen and I didn't really get it for the status so much as I got it because I wanted it in my collection. Heard a lot about it, heard about the quality, wanted one. Um, I don't care if someone sees me with that or, or this Jin Hao. I still use that Jin Hao pen. Mm -hmm. I mean, anywhere in between. I like my old Mont Blanc here. This was the one I didn't really like a whole lot. It writes fine. Every time I pick it up, doesn't matter how long I've left it laying around, I go to pick up, it writes. It writes flawlessly. Um, it just writes very fine. I think it's an extra fine nib, and I'm not, fa I'm not very fond of those. So, anyway. <sighs> Mont Blanc 149. Cannot complain. I am very happy with it now that it writes well. So, what are my takeaways? Um, number one, you can find pens 
at decent prices if you look, if you're willing to be patient, if you're willing to look around. I waited until a pen show where I knew I would have a plethora of them from which to choose because there were vendors all over that had uh, Meisterstück 149s. Um, I didn't intend to get it, but I was prepared to be able to pull the trigger on a good purchase. And so I did. Uh, the 146 was actually what I was aiming for, but I went one step higher and went with a 149. The 146 wrote very nice dipping it in ink and writing with it. I was happy with that. And I was prepared to go for it for, for about 100 bucks less. Uh, also reconditioned at the factory compared to the same price I'd seen at other tables uh, for, oh, yeah, it came with a box, but no guarantees on it and uh, uh, it hasn't been reconditioned. So, I'm happy with what I got. Don't be afraid to bide your time. Be patient. Look around. If you've got a, a pen show to go to, great. Um, if you feel like taking a chance on eBay for that kind of money, sometimes it's a, you know, it's kind of a lotto <laughs> whether or not you're going to hit the lotto or not. Sometimes you get a great pen at a pen show. Sometimes not. I mean, I bought three decent pens two of which had problems from a pen show, one of them brand new in the box, which I fixed. Uh, this one, factory reconditioned, never been used since it was reconditioned, and I had to do some nip work on it. But it works, it works great. Uh, used it all day long today. So, anyway, if you're looking for a quality, uh, you know, looking for a quality pen, you know, there you go. I've been rambling on this episode because I felt like it. I felt like telling a story and I'm actually in a good mood about the idea that I got my 149 writing and I didn't have to pay a nibsmith to do it. I did it myself and I'm happy with it so yay me.